You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott Money News. Greetings again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. It's Friday the 13th. Yeah, it sure is. Friday, March the 13th, 2020. It's time for your Weekly Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us is Eric Sprott. Eric, good morning. Hey, hey Craig, good morning. Uh, a lot of carnage going on in the world here, so... Uh... We have lots of explaining to do. Yeah, that's for sure. And um, it has been an interesting week, a week like probably none of us anticipated or have actually seen before. And it's all being driven, obviously, by the coronavirus, which is now um, recognized as a global pandemic. And that ripple effect is going through the global economy. Sprott Money has launched the Daily Drill news feed from Thomson Reuters. Onto our site, you can find up-to-date news on precious metals, mining, coronavirus, and the global economy by visiting SprottMoney.com. Just look for this Daily Drill news feed under the Insights section of the website. We hope you find that to be a useful resource. Uh, Eric, it has been quite a week. We've had uh, (laughs) gold... And silver and these shares perform rather, I'd say, counterintuitively to what maybe many folks, including myself, might have thought a couple of weeks ago. Just your thoughts on what we've seen. Sure. Well, and and counterintuitively to what I would have imagined, too. Uh, In fact, as I sort of sat there yesterday and looked at the gold price, which was still at 1640, as you realize that the market was going to crash yesterday, and, you know, you know, that's pretty damn stout that it's hung in here as the market's gone down 27% in a month and gold basically almost at its high. Well, of course, that didn't last long yesterday. Uh, and unfortunately, all the while, the stocks have been getting hammered. And I believe that stocks get hammered because people uh, just look for liquidity. They need liquidity because... Too many people are on margin and or in speculative leverage vehicles, which, of course, are just changing violently. Imagine being long a triple long gold fund or something. I mean, my God, you just get your head blown off. So, uh, so there, And there's a lot of those funds out there, and a lot of people like do, like investing in those things. So the minute you have a problem like we have, we have a serious, serious problem here. Everything just gets beat up like crazy. So I think it's just it's a liquidity thing. Now, to explain the price of gold, on the other hand, where, quite frankly, the demand for gold uh, via the ETFs has been very good, uh, I do believe that yesterday's massacre is very similar to other massacres I've seen recently, where basically the commercials are running the stops because Gold is in demand. In fact, I'm going to conclude this interview with the sort of a, a treatise on where I think gold's likely to go here, and I think it's going to be considerably up for a a new reason. Uh, so I'm, I haven't lost any uh, any hope in things uh, performing well. I would say gold actually performed well. I think that it's that's a trading at sixteen hundred dollars here. So you know it's it's down like maybe three percent from a from a closing high, not a closing high price, but I'm just, I'm using 1650 as kind of like that's a pretty impressive price. So to only be down three percent when the rest of the world's down uh, in the 25s and 30s, not bad. Unfortunately for those of us who own stocks, myself included, it's been carnage and then probably acted worse than the stock market. Unfortunately, but I think if my uh, thesis on gold holds, we'll see a pretty uh, fast recovery. Yeah, here at 1600 or so, uh, we began the year at 1520. And so gold is up about 5% year to date. Um, So all this talk about it not being a safe haven or whatever uh, is doing a lot of what you'd expect it to do, even though we're still using the futures contracts to price it. Uh, Eric, what do you think? It it just seems to me kind of a supply-demand issue a lot of times in the shares. It's such a tiny sector. Um, and so you get outsized moves. That's why they can move up so far because nobody is selling at certain times. Well, we've run into a period here where nobody is buying. And that's why it seems to me you get these, these big drops. You agree with that? 
Absolutely. And of course, I look at, I also believe that the all markets are uh, full of manipulations. And of course, you take a small market cap group like the gold stocks and and particularly the junior gold stocks, my God, they're easy to manipulate. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I've, I've always wanted the re- reinstitution of the uptick rule here. Uh, I hope that I hope it would happen. I hope that the authorities looking at markets getting, you know, taken apart here in a month. Ten uh, percent in a day, ten percent yesterday might reconsider some of those things, you know, that you don't have uh, sort of. The people that can just with reckless abandon destroy value. So um, anyway, that's that's for another day. But uh, I think it's all part of it that we have many forces, powerful forces, always working against us. We're lucky that we have one thing working for us, and that is that gold is appreciated yeah. by people around the world, and they continue to buy it. So. That's right. And, you know, you and I have talked for years about physical demand finally breaking the back of the pricing scheme and the banks that control it. Well, <laughs> we may be on the verge of that uh, surging physical demand. You have uh, certainly been watching all of the rest of the markets this week. I'm sure you got a lot on your mind. We've uh, Eric, yeah. here we are this morning after two limit down days going into the New York Stock Exchange Open so far this week. We've got a limit up day on our hands. Uh, what do you think is driving that? Sure. Well, of course, I think what's driving yeah. it is Everyone thinks that uh, whatever the central banks are proposing and or the fiscal authorities will solve the problem. Uh, As it turned out, the problem didn't start off as a financial problem. It started off as a health problem. And uh, perhaps I should go to the health problem. And um, I, I find it very interesting when I look at some of the comments that I have seen recently. So, for example, I read... Uh, yesterday, that the Department of Health Director for for Ohio suggested that Ohio already has 100,000 cases. Yeah, her words, not mine. Okay, and um, she's obviously from the medical field. Uh, I've seen uh, articles that suggest that Iran could have up to 10 million cases. Uh, I don't know where they get the numbers, but so be it. I, I read uh, uh, Mayor de Blasio, uh, who has suggested that, yes, we have 95 uh, cases in New York City. Uh, this is stated yesterday. Uh, but, but we're likely to have 1,000 by next week. And you know what? That's a big change going from 90, 95 to 1,000. And he was also... Uh, gave some interviews where he's talking about what they might have to to do in in New York City, and of course he talks about he talks about major job losses, uh, shortages of food, uh, people in in distress rent wise. Like that's a very very bleak picture, but it's a real thing. It can happen. I I do believe that the, the public ultimately, uh, for self-interest, will panic. And you may find, for example, I, I went into a drugstore down here in Scottsdale oh, about a week ago, and the lady said, what, sir, can I help you find something? I said, yeah, could you help me find uh, all of those things that you're missing right now? <laughs> and that would be, you know, hand sanitizer, plastic gloves, Oh, yeah, no, we're out of those. Yeah, we're out of those. Yeah, well, that's what I'm looking for, okay? So that was the first level. The first level was the, the medical things. The next level will be sort of the, uh, the, the non-perishables that you can store forever, and then maybe it'll even get to the perishables. Who knows? But, you know, people are, 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 are interested in, in um, protecting themselves. Uh, I've... You know, the Cliff High interview that I mentioned last week, he suggested, and this is going to sound really crazy, that this could be a three- to five-year thing. You know, uh, we all hope he's not right. Even Cliff hoped he's not right. But everything that we've all uh, sort of expected mathematically for the coronavirus has happened here. Yeah. And let's not forget one thing that is 
rarely discussed. It looks like it's a man-made virus out of a bio lab with MERS in it, with SARS in it, with HIV in it. And how you come up with something that's going to solve that, that has all those strains in it. And I, I'm not just health specialist, but I, th- I think it's fair to say you could imagine it's not going to be that easy. So this could be with us for a while. Uh, I saw a projection of the cases in the United States, which, you know, went back, started at the beginning of March, and every day showed exactly where we would be, including where we'd be today, and went right there. And it concluded that on April 1st, we'll have 690,000 cases in the United States. Jeez. Just math. And yeah. when I look at these numbers, the rate that the numbers go up by in Italy and France and Iran, oh my God, and, and New York City for that matter, uh, the U.S., the rate that they're going up by, they double every week. So, yeah. and that's in all countries, uh, which by the way makes me wonder how the hell China has cured their problem. And, and uh, Let's take it one step further. Let's say they have cured their problem. How did they cure their problem? They stopped everything. Right. They just stopped everything. Right. They shut people in. You imagine, let's just imagine New York City. Everyone stay in your homes for six or eight weeks. What is, you know, we're probably not that willing to do that. And God knows the chaos it could create. So anyway, it's sort of an explanation of why the market is falling here because you have so many industries in fact almost all industries that could stop right all of them right (laughs) gdp going down half of one percent how about gdp going down 40 percent right it's like it's like china's car sales were down i think 79 percent in february well, how can you buy a car when you're locked in your apartment building? And, and kind of tough. What does that do to the car salesman's salary? Uh, you know, that's just that one example. You know, so, I mean, it, let's let's deal with the NBA and all the, all the you know the people that would attend the games, the people that would work at the games. Yeah. Uh, the, the vendors <clears throat> to games. Uh, I, I was speaking with a friend of mine whose wife is in the, the florist business. Well, all events are being canceled. Yeah. You know? Oh, we don't need your flowers anymore. Forget it. But think of all the, the, the supply, the logistics, the mob and demob for all these things that are now being canceled. Eric, There's a lot of people employed in those businesses. You've been on this, Eric, for... You've been warning us about this for six or eight... I mean, really, since early February... And the people you follow, the people I follow, unfortunately, have all been correct in understanding how this virus spreads and the exponential function and everything that goes with it. Um, as you said, it now infects, that's <laughs> no pun intended, uh, all markets, uh, not just the stock market, but the bond market, the credit markets. Uh, all small businesses are going to have to deal with this. We've seen the reason the stock futures are up this morning is that, you know, this proposal that maybe a trillion euro coming out of the EU, you know, the Fed had their stuff yesterday with repo and a trillion dollars. I mean, that appears to be just a drop in the bucket. It's a liquidity issue. As you said, all of the selling exacerbates the liquidity issue. So Eric, um, as you look forward, I, I wanted to ask you this because I started thinking about this yesterday. What do you think the chances are that the markets just close for a while? Well, you know, after yesterday's close with the Dow down 10%, it uh, seemed like a distinct possibility to me. I mean, how much can you take? We're already down, uh, whatever the number is, 27, 28%. These, and by the way, the extent of this decline. There's three other times that we had the extent of this decline in the history of the stock market. 1929, the stock market crash of 1987, and 07, 08. They're all crashes. Yeah. And this is a crash. And unfortunately for Americans and maybe Canadians, the response of the health people has been abysmal. 
and irresponsible. You you only had something like 11,000 tests in the States, right. and quite often you have to give more than one test to a person. I gather we might have had 8,000 people tested. Here's the the uh, Department of Health director in Ohio thinking she might have 100,000 cases already. That's just Ohio, uh, which would imply some huge number for the whole uh, like 3 million people would have it already, if I use her math, or 1% of all people. And, and we've done, you know, maybe, maybe tested 8,000 people. Come on. How do, you, how do you get in front of this thing? You have to test and test and test, follow up in the context to stop the thing. Otherwise, you've got to go into lockdown. And let's not forget, we've had lockdowns already in New York State, in Washington State, I don't know, there's probably some other ones I'm forgetting, but it's out there, the, the, the lockdown possibility. So as we look forward, Eric, uh, the FOMC meets next week. It, it almost seems as if the Fed was reluctant to really announce anything this week because they want to keep their powder dry for the scheduled meeting that is Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Um, what would you expect and, and how, what would be, what do you think people will do as these plans are announced, will people just kind of take it, sell into any strength there is? Um, is it a time to just hold and wait? What do you think? Uh, well, it's a great question. First of all, I think rate cuts are not the answer. <laughs> you know, we're not dealing with rate cuts here. We're dealing with a health issue, okay? So what you really need to do is, is fire substantive resources at the health problem. That's what has to happen. And I suspect that we're just dithering here and we, you know, we think we got to cut rates or let's throw a trillion at the banking system. Why well, are you kidding me? The banking system? How right. about the people? It's the people that are, have the problem here. So we haven't really dealt with that. And we seem to think that the most important thing is the banking system. Well, that's what the central banks think is important, but it's not the important thing. So they're quite misguided there. But I think one of the things that, People should be aware of it. One of the great, one of the big changes in the last two days was that bond, the government bond rates went up. First of all, we have corporate bonds. You can't even do a corporate bond issue anymore. The high yield bonds have skyrocketed in yield. So there's big, big, big losses being taken in the non-government part of the bond market. Okay, and now we have the government part of the bond market where rates are really moving up faster. And why is that? Because the governments are sitting there promising to do everything, i.e. print money, whatever. Well, you know what? you got to raise it somewhere. Or theoretically, you got to raise it. Maybe just print the stuff. Yeah. Um, but so the bond market's kind of uh, starting to choke a little on some of the numbers that are flying around, uh, which is not good because the, the, the bond market rallying has been a bit of an offset to the stock market crashing. And so a guy with a balanced uh, portfolio at least has mitigated his losses here. But the one thing I think people should start to focus on is what is going to happen in the, in the banking world as every customer of the bank is worse off every day. The people that aren't going to collect a salary, the businesses that are going to shut down, the loans that they have with the banks. And quite frankly, I see big, big risk today in banks. And of course, one of the first things that the Bank of England did is say, well, we're going to reduce the, uh, uh, the capital ratio, right? In other words, you can lend more with less capital. Well, of course they did, because the write-offs are going to start mounting at the banks here. I mean, you saw... Uh, uh, Boeing take down, a, I think it was a $13 billion line of credit. Well, you know what? I can almost predict to you that Boeing will not sell a plane for two years. Yeah. You know? Like, who's going to want to, who's, who needs to buy an airplane? We got airplanes sitting around by the, by the truckload here. Because people aren't traveling anymore. So when, when, is, when is Boeing going to sell another airplane? <laughs> Commercial airplane. I don't know. But I'm very concerned about the banking system. And for me, and I made this decision yesterday, I prefer my money not in the banking system. So either you take a big wad of cash and stick it in your pocket, 
or there's one other thing you can do, buy gold. And yesterday, I bought physical gold. Now, I already have lots of physical gold, but I just decided I prefer my money to be in physical gold than in a risky bank. And you look at the the shares, uh, the price of the shares of the banks. I was looking at a chart of the European banks. They've gone down by, wow, like 95% or something from right. their uh, last decade high, right? Right. <laughs> And that that tells you something. And you look at the the uh, share prices of even our North American bank. I mean, they have been whacked here. So it's not good in the banking system. It's pr- it's probably going to get worse if we have a full stop economy. You know what's what's it going to be like to have a levered balance sheet where you've got you know twenty dollars of liabilities and and one uh, against one dollar of capital. And what's the odds that that twenty dollars of liabilities doesn't decline? Or sorry, the asset on the asset on the other side, the twenty dollars right. of assets declines by ten percent. So now you've lost uh, two points, but you only had one point of capital. So that, that's a big concern. I went through this in oh uh, seven oh eight when I remember. I love repeating this. I, I bought in oh nine after the crash. I bought Citigroup at a dollar a share, one dollar. Citigroup, why? Because it was broke. Got bailed out. Fannie Mae, I bought it a buck. Uh, Freddie Mac, I bought it a buck. Ford, I bought it a buck. They were all broke. That's what can happen with a when you go full stop. And I think this is worse than 0708. 0708 was a housing thing where some people got outside of one segment of the economy. We may not have an economy right now time will tell yeah well and as you mentioned gold has been money for millennia and if you know if anything's coming out the other side it's going to be gold and and so i I think what you said is wise and i think as the the rest of the world comes to grips with that uh that demand has to be reflected even in the paper price eric (laughs) Hey, yeah. I, I, I do want to ask you, you know, we, we still had a list of questions about stocks this week. And I know, um, just like I haven't had time really to look, you, I know you haven't had much time to look at things like uh, Alexco and Kootenay and some of the others uh, that were asked about. And some folks want to know about, you know, why is Kirkland Lake going down? Well, we kind of explained that. They're all going down. Um, with so many people rushing to sell and nobody looking to buy. But we did just one specific one that we probably received three or four questions on this week was uh, Bonterra. Do you have any thoughts on um, how that company is doing and their production and that type of thing? Yeah. Well, of course, they don't have any production because their Metanor uh, mine uh, was uh, closed down to be reopened in due course. I don't, I'm not sure when it's going to be reopened, but... Uh, I, I would have thought that had it been open today with $1,600 gold, it would have been doing well. And I do believe it almost costs as much to close a mine yeah. and, uh, in, term, in terms of your monthly costs versus even just losing money, you know, because you still got to spend money. Uh, they've had some pretty good drilling success. Uh, I think there is a, a major shareholder that is uh, kind of tiring of it. That's what I've heard. So that's not helped at all. Uh, I'm also a major shareholder and I have not been selling. Um, and it, that's what happens when you, you end up with a determined seller and, you know, your, your buyers are coming in almost like by appointment and, uh, it just puts <laughs> big pressure on the stock. So that's very, uh, very unfortunate, but I'm, a, I, I still am a huge believer that gold is going to ride this out beautifully and we will see record high prices probably this year. Most people in the world, other than the commercials on the COMEX, love gold. <laughs> so we we just got to beat them. And I noticed overnight that they they did a lot of covering of their gold positions on the, that the forced decline. I, I swear they just forced it. And then of course every all these technical people looking through the, the lines that are being broken, they're sitting there buying it from them. And of course now it got down to fifteen sixty yesterday. I think it's around sixteen hundred as we speak. So you know we've come back uh, pretty well so far. And it is the same old game. You're wise to point that out. I mean the commercials, the banks that that the bullion banks, and they issued the contracts, and they were as of 
10 days ago, the last time we had a commitment of trader survey, they were net short 351,000 contracts, my friend. So that's 35 million yeah. ounces. Uh, yeah. On every dollar, they lose $35 million. So you, you had to suspect yeah. that they're going to do everything they can to trim that position because they know what's coming too. I mean, they're not like they're walking yeah. around with their heads in the sand. Yeah. And and really in this market, is there, is there any logic to being short gold you right. know, like as, as a bank? Right. You know, you got more damn problems on your plate than than trading gold. Right. If you're a bank these days. So, we've been at this for quite a long time uh here this morning. We should probably move to wrap up. I just want to double check before we do though. Is there anything else on your mind you'd like to cover uh, before we talk again next week? Uh I think we basically covered everything off. Uh well, there was the lots of, there's lots of other things in uh in the coronavirus, you know, like you, you get the sense of there's countries out there that I think have big cases and big problems, but they're not going there, okay? And we're going to find out later. And so it becomes, a, you know, if people can, are allowed to travel, it, it, this thing won't stop. So everybody should, uh, and I, I think you got to start imagining the worst case situation. We've already seen a partial stop of the economy. Just imagine it in full stop mode and react accordingly. Yeah. Good advice. All right. Uh, and react accordingly means preparing for time at home. We've been talking about that for a number of weeks. If you have to self-quarantine, if you're ordered to self-quarantine, you've got to have uh, all sort, you know, everything you need to not leave your house. So people are stocking up on supplies right now. There's also been, for good reason, as you mentioned, a lot of stocking up of gold and silver too. If you haven't considered it yet, please visit SprottMoney.com, one of the largest online bullion dealers to explore which products are the right investment for you. Uh, we have some things on special like uh, Royal Canadian Mint Gold Maples, which is our biggest seller right now, are as low as $83.50 Canadian over spot. All sorts of great deals that's brought money to get you started. As we said, physical gold and silver have been money for millennia. There'll be money through the next millennia. Uh, that's one thing that you can count on. My friend, thank you for all you do, for all the words of wisdom, all the warnings you've given us over the last several weeks. And uh, now, go wash your hands. There you go. Okay. You have a great uh, weekend, and uh, we'll speak next week. We, that we will. All right. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, everyone, for listening from all of us at Sprott Money News at SprottMoney.com. Again, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next Friday. 